Welcome to Mindset Class. Thank you so much for being here. Are we clear? Are we present? And are we here in the moment rather than having distractions open? Yes. Awesome. Thank you, Helen. Helen always gives me the thumbs up. Um, so please shut down whatever you've, you've got open, put the phone on silent and really get present because um, the next hour and a bit is actually all about you, regardless of whether or not you end up in the hot seat. Every single mind class that we do, there is synchronicity and there's messages that come through for you and the whole community, regardless of who's sitting in the hot seat. So I encourage you to listen today through the lens of what is what is the message for me? Because that's how you'll get the most out of today. So William James, who is um, a renowned psychologist and philosopher, um, has this really beautiful, impactful quote, which is that he said, the greatest discovery of our generation is that human beings can alter their lives by altering their mind. And I think you're probably sitting there going, yeah, no, I know that. I get it. I know. <laughs> but the truth is, is if you really knew the power that you have within you, your life and your business would look very, very different right now. So I know that you get it on a conceptual level, but there's a difference between conceptually getting it and living it. Now, for those of you that work one-on-one -on -one with me, you know that we really deep dive into mindset. But this space today is an opportunity for, for you, regardless of where you are in your journey, to give up your BS stories and to alter your mindset so you actually alter your business and your life because you have so much power within you that you don't even recognize or realize what it is that you can truly create. And one of those things or one of those powers within you that you're not fully accessing and transforming through your mind is your scarcity. Now we're going to talk about scarcity in the context of your business but your scarcity mindset shows up in your relationships in your finances it even shows up in the relationship you have with yourself feeling like you aren't enough don't have enough can't do enough Scarcity with yourself. So we're going to look at scarcity in the context of your business and your finances because something that I'm seeing so consistently inside of our community, in our business builder community, is this mindset that there's not enough. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough energy. I don't have enough money. I'm not enough, there's not enough clients. And if we look at what William James said around the fact that the greatest discovery is that human beings can alter their lives by altering their minds, that means that equally, whatever story it is that you are running about scarcity, you are creating and co-creating consistently. When you say it's hard to find clients, whether you say it in your own brain or you verbalize it, you have now created that as your reality. When you say, I don't have enough time, you have now created that as your reality. I don't have enough money, you've now created that as your reality. And then that reality shows up in the people you're trying to serve.
meaning that the prospects and even your clients are a reflection of what's going on within you. They're just reflecting back to you your BS. So when you seek out mentorship or you seek out to change something within your business, when you then turn around and tell yourself it's too expensive, the clients or the prospects that you get on a call with or you're in a DM with, they're going to say the same crap back to you consistently. There's always going to be outliers, there's, right? Like I get it inside of my activities. There's always going to be people that say they don't have money. That's, that's life. But if this is showing up for you consistently in the conversations that you have in your business, whether it's in DMs or on sales calls, if it's showing up consistently, that's you, not them. The problem is not out there. So it's really important to start to listen to how you're speaking to yourself first and foremost. And then how you're speaking to others, because you are literally co-creating your tangible reality every minute of the day with the thoughts and the words that you use. Is this making sense? Is it resonating? Are you seeing yourself in this? Yes. Now, it's not enough to just shift your words. That's important. But you've got to believe what you're shifting. So there's no point turning around and going, I've got heaps of money if you don't believe it. <laughs> right? We have to get in there and we have to identify where is the subconscious block? What is the belief? And then we have to reframe your perception. So it's not, affirmations are great, but... They don't work unless you believe them and unless you take a tangible doing action with that affirmation. So it's not enough to just change the language. You've got to get in there and find the block and then reframe it. And by the way, you are not going to hold yourself accountable to finding your shit to the same degree as working with a mentor will. You know it. Because the human brain is wired as an animal to run away from pain and seek pleasure. So the minute you sit down to try and do your mindset work on your own, the minute you hit a block, a pain point, you're out of there. Stop lying to yourself. That's why we work with mentors. So that they push us and hold us accountable in a safe space. So be mindful that if you are trying to solve problems on your own, it becomes very, very difficult because you're only ever going to scratch the surface because the minute that there's a difficulty, you're running away. The last thing I will share with you before, before we look at hot seat <clears throat> I cannot explain to the depth of importance, words will not do it justice, the importance of being the type of client you want to attract. Show up in the world and in your business as the client that you would love to attract. One of you here today took me up on my 10K secret offer that I sent out about six weeks ago. I sent out a secret offer. It was 10K. There was no details until you paid. That's pretty scary. Would you agree to spend 10K on something you don't know what you're getting? Yes? Well, that individual paid the 10K and she's just had her first 10K month. Be the type of client you want to attract. You have so much power to alter your reality. 
but it starts in here and in here. So team, I hope that's been helpful in giving you some things to ponder on and work with as you show up now for the rest of your week, especially because I'm going to be away for most of the rest of the week. <laughs> not quite, not yet. So as always, we're going to go for about an hour. And I really encourage you, if you haven't already, to land in this space because there are messages here for you today. The universe is here to send you what you need to hear today what you've been waiting to hear, to alter your reality. Um, one person is going to be in the hot seat and you're going to pick that person. And the reason you pick the person in the hot seat is because of the synchronicity that occurs, the entanglement. The community picks the person and therefore there's a message there for the whole community. So listen through the lens of what's going on for you personally and if you are putting your hand up for hot seat today I really encourage you to be completely open and be mindful that this is recorded so it will be shared so with that in mind uh, and you've got 60 seconds to kind of put your pitch to the to the group and then um, I encourage the rest of you to be listening for what the person is sharing because you're going to choose. It's not a popularity contest, of course. It's based on the topic or the, the, the issue that you want to work on. So show of hands, if you can put your Zoom hand up, that's even better. Who wants to be in the hot seat today? No one. Okay, Sue, awesome. <laughs> Who else? Aralea? Anyone else? Who am I? What, what, uh, Ash? Okay, okay, great. Shakar, did I see a hand up? Okay, all right. So you've all got 60 seconds to pitch. We are going to start with Aralea. Go for it. Okay, so my subject is about like i'm afraid to make mistakes but i really i truly hate to make mistakes you know so i do everything that i can to prevent making mistakes but in the meantime i have all this time this inner struggle going on like should i do that no you're not prepared no you should do that you know <laughs> you should stay in that comfort zone so it's, re it's really messing me up, especially as I'm now widening up my comfort zone. So. Okay, perfect. We can all relate to that, baby. Thank you, Aralea. Katrin, 60 seconds to share your pitch on what you want to work on, sweetheart. Go for it. I completely relate to what Aralea just mentioned. Mine's similar to that, but it's playing small and making myself fit into others' expectations and having the courage to break free and to live in the genius that I was meant to live in. Perfect. Again, relatable. And you'll start to see themes because of the synchronicity that's happening. Mr. Ash, go for it, sweetheart. Um, I put my hand up because I didn't want to put my hand up. And it was, um, yeah, I feel like there's something wrong with me, right? It's like, it feels like really hard to, to, you know, build money, keep money to, um, keep it coming in. And, you know, I feel like there's some sort of like deficit or something that I have where I, yeah, just have these patterns and it's like, repeat 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 i'm super vulnerable and thank you because again i think everybody can relate to what you've just shared so guys i hope you're taking note shakar go sir go well it's uh, the thing is that i know i'm stuck um i just can't put my finger on where exactly i'm stuck because I have so much knowledge and uh, and for one hand I, I'm um, I, I feel I'm procrastinating. Uh, on a, on the other hand, um, I also know that um, it's not just that I, I'm just stuck and I don't know 
where to put the finger, where is the, I feel that there's something stuck that if I just remove that, everything will fall into place. I just know, don't know how to, uh, or how to uh, find it. I'm just, I'm just stuck. <coughs> I'm just taking notes. Thank you for sharing. Again, super relatable <laughs> and super vulnerable. And so I really, really appreciate that, Shakar. Miss Sue, by the way, I love how many hands have gone up for hot seat today because that just shows me the action taking that is finally going on. <laughs> Sue, go for it, my love. Um, so I actually make good money. But I can't hold on to it. It just always seems to be, you know, I look and I go, wow, that was a fantastic month. And I've done this for years and years, but then I don't hold on to it. In a couple of months on, I'm going, gee, what am I doing with that money? Where's it going? So um, uh, I think there's something there still. It's, it's, I don't know. I don't get the scarcity thing because I make really good money and I love what I do, but I just can't hold on to it. Uh, thank you for sharing that. That's also really relatable for many people. Um, and if we don't cover that topic today, I'm going to cover it in a business builder session because uh, there's a lot of wisdom to be shared around that. Because you may make money easily. You might make sales quite easily. But then the end of the month comes and you look at it and you go, where's my money gone? And there, there's a reason that happens. So that's... Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Was there anyone else that had their hand up that I've missed? No? Okay. So I'm going to get you all to put a vote for the person or the topic from the person that you want to work on. And then if you put your hand up as an individual, can you please count how many times your name is in the chat? So go for it, team, in the chat. Who are you choosing? <clears throat> Shakar's so sweet that he's voted for somebody else. <laughs> you, guys <are> so <laughs> you guys are the, I love you guys. You guys it's, are the best. You put the your closest, hands up. It's the closest to what uh, I do. <laughs> you guys are the best. I vote for Enna's green juice. That looks amazing. I want that. Okay, so guys, if you put your hand up, can you get in the chat and count how many? And then let me know. All right, Aralea's got one. Ash has got five. Catherine, three. I mean, there's so many juicy topics here. I feel like we need to do three mindset classes. <laughs> All right, Ash is in the lead so far. Sue, a close second. All right, so I think it's you, Ash. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah, I really, I really didn't want to be in the seat. I oh. still don't want to be in the seat. Okay, so here's a great example of something that I share, which is whatever you fear comes near. Or another way to look at it is whatever you try to run from, you run into. Um. So, but I really appreciate, Ash, I know you think you didn't want to be in the seat, but you clearly did because you, you were brave enough to put your hand up and you've co-created winning the hot seat today. So welcome, sir. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's definitely part of me that just wants to hide. But <laughs> that, that, that part's not winning. All right. So um, for all of you, yep, whatever you resist, persist. There we go. Another, another way to say it. Um, so for all of you, I really encourage you to listen for, through the lens of yourself today. Because even though you may think you've got different issues going on, there's actually going to be some synchronous things that happen and, and commonality. So you'll see yourself in today. So to all of you, thank you so much for putting your hand up and sharing vulnerably. And uh, even though it wasn't you this month, make sure you come back next month because it could be you. <clears throat> So, Ash, I know you've given us a little overview, but now that you're in the hot seat, what is the what is the thing that you're most disliking about yourself right now? Um, the pattern that I have where 
I guess I can see a few things. There's one like, you know, I'm not good at making money. Um, that there's never enough money, mm -hmm. feels like, to do what I want to do. Um, and yeah, it feels like, you know, kind of like water through my fingers, it's like comes in, gone. Um, and, you know, even when there is money, there's like mm -hmm. the fear of losing the money or it's like, you know, when there's a lot of money in my bank account, it's like, ah, oh, it's like watching that money. And then as the, if money goes down, it's like, oh, 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 oh. And there's, there's real fear, anxiety. And there's, there's definitely something there where it just feels like survival mode and and hustling and you know that my my mind is going oh where can i get money from next well if this is coming this is and this is here and this is there and, <clears throat> yep can we all relate to this and kind of similar even though sue said she doesn't have a scarcity problem um ash has shared something similar around the constant watching and when it comes in and then it slips through the fingers. So given, before we kind of deep dive into that, <clears throat> I'm going to show you what I was I was going to talk about uh, if Sue was in the hot seat because it's relevant. All right. Can you all see my screen? Yes? Yep. Okay. I'm going to share with you um, what I believe to be the most impactful equation of what your net worth is made up of. And your net worth is the money that you have, right? It's, it's what you have access to. <clears throat> so your net worth, right? Now I'm saying net worth here because net worth is what you have access to, not what you bring in. So like Sue said, uh, you know, I'm okay with bringing it in, but it's the keeping it. So your net worth is made up of two things. Your self-worth. I don't know why I did a plus sign there. Your self-worth, <clears throat> pardon me, plus other worth equals your net worth. So if you have high self-worth, <clears throat> pardon me, um, that'll show up in the, your, like your ability to solve problems, your perception of your ability to solve problems for yourself. And your other worth is a reflection of the perception from yourself and others in your ability to solve problems for them. So this gives you money. This is where it stays. Your net worth, or if you have a higher net worth, it's a reflection of your perception that you, A, solve problems for yourself and others, and you keep the money. <clears throat> so if you have high other worth, for example, you might make sales really easily. But if your self-worth is low, even though you make lots of money, you throw it away. You spend it on things, you give it to charities, you buy shit you don't need. You, buy, you, you, you invest in depreciables. It's just like constantly slipping through your fingers and you don't know where it's gone. So that means you have a lower self-worth. And your self-worth is a reflection of shame and guilt. So if you have a lot of shame and guilt stacked up within you, you're going to have a low self-worth.
And this is something that we do inside of some of my one-on-ones. One of you is doing an exercise every single month now to clear out the shame and guilt that I've given you. And your revenue keeps growing. <clears throat> If you have a low other worth and a low self-worth, this is where you're going to struggle to make sales and keep the money. So the other worth is both your perception of your ability to solve problems for others as well as the market's perception of your ability to solve their problems. And that will equate to how much money you have left, how much money you make and how much money you keep. Does that make sense? <clears throat> so if you're struggling to consistently bring in clients, then it's your perception that you don't have high value to others. And then when the money comes in, You've got a lot of shame and guilt stacked up within you, so you are constantly giving the money to others. And I don't necessarily mean in a charity. I just mean, like, when you go and buy stuff, you're giving your money away. Before you go and purchase something, have you ever sat there and, and done an equation to work out what it actually costs you to get that $500 to spend? Because it doesn't cost you, it, the, to get the $500 to spend, it costs you about three times that. Because you've got to take into account taxes, the time of the acquisition of the client, the administration time. So that $500 is actually $1,500 of your time. Helen, you're getting off on this? I know you like numbers. <laughs> All right, so I hope that equation was beneficial to you. If if that is if you're working one on one with me and that's something that you want to explore, we can do that in your one on one sessions. So Ash, did that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Looking at that equation, what do you think about yourself from from seeing that equation? Um, I think there's deficits in both the self-worth and the other worth as in so the yep so you know it's a lot better than it used to be but yeah I think there's deficits in, in both and by the way this is a lifelong journey Right. So if you think you get to some end point where all of the sudden you're going to have enough money, it's never going to be enough team, even if you had one billion dollars in your account. It's never going to be enough. And like Ash said, he's better now at making and keeping, say, compared to five years ago. And you can probably look at yourself and see that as well. But if you want to keep expanding, then you got to keep doing this work. So Ash, you said the first thing you said when I asked you what it was that you disliked about yourself, you said, I'm not good at making money. What does that mean? <clears throat> um well, you know, I can I reflect straight away what comes to mind is I was a school teacher for 22 years and just, you know, at the end of every fortnight, it was like, yeah, you know, all the money would be gone. And I just, you know. And I stayed with, you know, I wanted to quit teaching after the second year and I stayed with it another 20 years and it was for the security, yet I didn't feel secure. Okay. So I'm glad you brought that up because you are all running a version of your story where you think that you don't want something in your life right now. Like Ash said, I wanted to quit teaching after two years. Well, clearly you didn't because you kept going. And so you prioritize the perception of safety and security 
over stepping into your genius and living your purpose. And then, Ash, what happened? Near-death experience. <laughs> it died. So, it and, died. And, you know, and, and I see that playing out too, right, Because in my current state because it's like if I don't do things now, right, like if I don't have this adventure now, I could be dead in five minutes. You know, I could drive down the road and be dead. And so there's this like impatience or this fear that, you know, something will happen and be gone. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing yourself in what Ash is sharing, team? It's like you want to have a business, you want to impact lives, you want to live in your genius, but at the same time, you want to do whatever you want to do for yourself and actually probably don't really there's a part of you pardon me there's a part of you that doesn't want to grow your business because you think it's taking away from you your time your family time your relationship time you're exploring the world time your self-connection time that's what it feels like ash mm -hmm. yep and and you know something that comes up is that I won't be able to do my music. Yeah. Um, and yeah, won't be able to go on adventures. Now, can you see, listen to this team. Can, can you see that you have this semi-conscious belief? So, there's a subconscious belief which you're partly conscious to, which is that you are starting to worry because your business has started to grow since we started working together, yes? Mm -hmm. yep. And now what's actually coming up for you is you're starting to worry that the more clients you get, which means money, the more it's going to take away from the other things that you want to do, like you just said, music and, and exploring. Mm -hmm. So you're conscious to that thought pattern. <clears throat> But what you're not conscious to, this is all of you, is that you will sabotage your business growth. You will co-create not having more clients because you're secretly scared it's going to take away from other things in your life. But then you'll blame the outside world for why your business is not working. Yeah, Shakar got it. He's, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because what you're actually doing is you're co-creating the destination of playing music, having more time to explore or whatever your version of that is, team. So you have a perception that you're not getting to do something right now. So you're going to co-create your life or your business not growing so that you can push yourself to get the thing that you think you want. But then once you get there, you're in a world of pain. Because what would happen, Ash, if you didn't get any new clients for the next three months, you'd have the time to do music and explore. But, but what, what would life really look like? Well, if I was just doing music, I'd be away all the time. So I would be home with family um, and yeah, and it, it is financially, it's very, 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 very challenging. Um, and if that wasn't working, then I'd be back getting the, the safe money in teaching and which would once again be scarcity, like, you know, slaves, feeling like a slave. Like a slave, right. Okay, so listen carefully, guys. What you fear comes near. So you're worried, Ash, that right now that more clients is going to take away from doing the things that you love, the other things in your life that you love. Mm -hmm. But equally, if you go to a different lifestyle, you're going to... So you're worried that if you have more clients, it's going to take away from family because you're going to be busy working all the time, music. But if you don't have the clients, you're going to get the life that you fear anyway, which is away from family, and slave money as a teacher that doesn't even pay enough anyway. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing what I'm seeing, team? 
<clears throat> you're creating what you're worried, what you're scared about is already here. It's already in your present moment. Whatever you fear is already existing in this moment. You've already created it. Ash, you said you've got a fear of losing the money when it comes in. Talk to me about that. What does that mean? <clears throat> um, what comes to mind is there was a time when I was homeless and I was sleeping in my van and you know, people would be like, oh, you can stay at my house and we're away for you know four or five days. And then I'd get there and you know they'd forgotten to leave the key out and then I'd have to go sleep in my van somewhere. Um, and that, that was for a couple of months and it was just, you know, by the end of it, yeah, I was really just ratchet. Like I was really sort of exhausted and stressed and high anxiety. Um, okay, great. So can you see that subconsciously you're trying to run away from a perceived pain in the past, but what we fear comes near. So when you have a, a fear around something that happened in the past, it's because you haven't seen the gifts that you were given. If, if you would not be prepared to be homeless again tomorrow, then you haven't learned to love your homelessness. And guys, this is a really hard lesson to get. And I'm about to take you down the rabbit hole, Ash. Because if you don't love the shit that you think has been all bad, you are going to create a version of it again. Many of you know I had an intravenous drug addiction. I've recently had to do the work because similarly, Ash, I was trying to run away from oh, my God, I can't have a drug addiction and then trying to stop my son. Oh, my God, so bad. He can't have a drug addiction, can't do drugs. Until you see the gifts, you're actually going to, you're going to bring that into your present moment. What was the benefit to you of being homeless, Ash? Um, well, there were some amazing experiences that happened. Um, Sleeping Don't give me a shopping list. Nature. Stop it. Stop. Yep. You and I work one-on-one oh. on one together. Stop the shopping list. Mm -hmm. Okay. Please get present. Oh. Come into, All right. come into the so ben The benefits. Um, well, what, you know, what truly does come to mind was that there were some amazing experiences. Um, so, for example, because I didn't have somewhere to live, I went and did this music camp that had like phenomenal musicians from all over the world and then performed on a massive stage in front of tens of thousands of people and I only as went a homeless man I did, I, I, yeah and I only went because I didn't have a bed and I thought I'll have a bed for 10 days <laughs> and ended up having an incredible experience doing the thing that you love which is music and exploring yourself yeah and the people that I met there I still have some of them in my life today and uh, they, you know it's amazing and so if you became homeless tomorrow what would how would that be of service to you it would definitely it would be meet that desire for adventure like mm -hmm. you know the, and sometimes you know the not knowing when i'm on the road if i don't know where i'm sleeping or whatever it leads to amazing adventures and connection with people and i can feel a deep connection to myself and feel connected to synchronicity um yeah so do you feel that right now the way you're living life there is a lack of connection to yourself to others and adventures um Definitely, I feel sometimes we, at the moment, I don't perceive there's a lack of adventures that I'm aware of, but, you know, I've just been out adventuring. Um, definitely lack of connection to others. 
like mm -hmm. I, I feel like you know I can be sitting here at the computer a lot and um at the moment I don't have a lot of friends in Sydney um yeah so I could definitely feel that one what was the other bit um a lack of connection to yourself to self not that I'm aware of I feel like there's I guess on in some element, like I'm spending more time on my own than I probably ever have. Mm -hmm. um, and there's definitely bits of that that I like. Um, and I discover about myself and you know, become more and more disciplined and then the benefits of the discipline. But then there's also like, I guess, missing that part of me that I know when I'm out adventuring, when I'm out you know, with others or connecting to others. Okay. So for many of us, because the way of the world has changed, a lot of us are spending a lot of time at home now working, whether it's in your nine to five or or, or in your business, your, your coaching consulting business. So if you perceive that there's a lack of something, you're going to create experiences in your life to give you to fill the cup up of that lack. And sometimes you're not very conscious to being strategic about how you do that. And then this is why you end up in pain. So the biggest thing right now, Ash, is that you perceive there's a lack of connection with others in your real life, as well as inside of your business. Mm -hmm. All right. So where is there connection to others in your life and your business? Um, well, definitely with working with clients, it's beautiful. Like, you know, it's really beautiful work and to, you know, to to sit with them and help them process whatever it is they need to process to move forward with what they want to do or, you know, emotionally, you know, there's deep connection there. Okay. And so for all of you, you should be asking your version of this question. If you perceive, we started this conversation about scarcity. If you perceive that there is something, a lack of in your life, whether it's money, connection, you actually want to go and have a look for where it is because it's not missing. It's just your perception. So the working with clients, though, Ash, that's clearly not enough connection for you So because you still perceive that there's a degree of missingness. Where else are you getting connection with others? Um, in my life right now? Yeah. Yep. Um, with my partner um so there's connection there um when i see my daughter there's connection when i see my friends um but at the moment it's you know for me to connect with my friends that means i have to be away from home okay that makes sense so i want to drill into this because do you perceive that it's physical connection that you're missing um, yeah, face to face. Right. Face -to -face. Like, you know, we can have phone calls, we can do Zooms and things like, like that. Okay. So you perceive that face to face connection is missing. So what you're going to do is repel potential clients and give away any money that comes in so that you can create a scenario where you perceive that you've got freedom to have face to face connection. Like that's the mm -hmm. subconscious strategy that's going on, team. Yeah, that makes you are sense. not a victim. You are always creating what's going on. But sometimes you don't realise what your subconscious strategy is. So maybe you give away your money as a push to make more money because you haven't learned to value yourself to keep it. So your motivator is I've got to have less money to make more money. Like Ash, I have, I have less face-to-face -face connection, so I've got to make sure I'm not making money because what's your perception about traveling to Queensland, by the way, which is where all oh, your friends are? Yeah, fun. Fun. I get to have fun and hang out and play music and see people I love and, you know, beautiful nature and, yeah. Right. So you're just trying to create more um, excuses and reasons to go and do that more often because you haven't worked out how to have all of it and integrate all of it, yes? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. If we come back to the money piece, 
what do you think the biggest problem for you with money is? Um, keeping it. Okay. Why do you think you shouldn't keep the money that you make? Because I could be dead at any second. Okay. We've hit a hit a raw spot. Mm. What are the tears? What's behind the tears? Mm -hmm. Um at the moment I don't want to be dead. Okay. What would be the benefit to dying today? Um, well, it would just be a blob of consciousness, not have a body, not have physical pain, not have money pain. Um, there'd be some freed, like, you know, there'd be freedom in that don't have the the human restrictions and the human burdens, I guess, but then I'm also where I wouldn't have the human experiences of the beauty and the connections and you know the the being able to play an instrument or write a song or share a song or human touch and things like that. Well you assume that, but you don't know. Well had an insight well you've had an insight but but you didn't die you're here you didn't finish you didn't finish dying for good right? <laughs> yeah yeah mm. guys if you are scared to die it's because you're infatuated with life meaning that you perceive that that you, you there is way more benefit to you being alive than dying now, whether that's right or wrong, that's a polarised perception that's running you instead of you running it. And what we fear is already in our present. Do you really feel alive right now, Ash? At times. And, yeah, and I, I feel much, much, much more alive than I did five years ago, six years ago. All right, so you're comparing to the past, but right now. I don't feel fully alive. Like I don't feel like like I do when, you know, when I feel connected to others, when I am giving more of myself and, and receiving more. And, yeah, there's, there's part of me that feels a bit ho-hum about my my working days so and and i also question i'm like why why am i not truly happy right now like you know i love i love what i'm doing and thing but there, there's this, like this uh, why isn't it quite feeling you know amazing okay so Happiness is a lie. If you are searching for happiness, you're going to be fucking depressed because it's not coming your way. The suffering is in trying to achieve something that is completely unobtainable, which is a, a constant, right? Mm. But this is relatable, isn't it? It's like you, you've you created your life to look a certain way and on the outside there's an expectation that you should be happy by now. But then you feel empty inside and then you actually beat yourself up for not being more appreciative, more happy for what you've got. And this is incredibly vulnerable, Ash, so I can't thank you enough because I know that the community here is just you you think you're not you want to give of yourself you've just given a community and for the replay watchers an incredible gift in being so real and raw 
How do you wish life looked? Um, I want to be out more. Explain what that means. Um, yeah, I want to be out in nature more. I want to um, yeah, just have more adventures. Okay. How would that be a disservice to you to be out more having more adventures right now? Um, because I'd be like this, you know, just fairy floating around without responsibilities or, you know, that, that I would be letting go of my responsibilities. Okay, which... how's, it a, how's it a drawback mm -hmm. to let go of your responsibilities? Is that really a drawback? Do you really care about letting mm -hmm. go of your responsibilities? You do? Yeah, I have family to support and, okay. You know, yeah. Um, so, so being out more deeply. and adventures, it would would it take away from your relationship and your family? Yes. Are you certain about that? I knew you were going to ask something like that. Um, <laughs> it, it, yeah. I, I know the answer is that it, it serves them as well. No, no, let's get real potato peel. If you decided mm -hmm. that you're going to go out and have more adventures now, what does that mean? Give me an exact scenario. It means financial scarcity. All right, it what's that mean? What does that mean to your wife and your relationship? What's mm -hmm. going to happen? Puts pressure on the relationship. Um, and then what happens? Then the relationship falls apart. And then what happens to you? And then I'm homeless in a van. Oh, you got what you wanted. No. You got what you secretly <laughs> wanted. No, seriously, because I know how much you mm. value this marriage. You've worked really, really hard to get to a point where you've created such a beautiful relationship with your wife. Mm -hmm. And I know that you value that immensely. So seriously, if you decided to get out and have more adventures What's going to happen to the relationship and the connection that you've built with your wife? Um, yeah, it puts pressure on it. To make, and eventually, to make what's it, going to happen with that pressure? Yeah, then it breaks. Is that what you want? No. Nah. No. Nah. So how can you integrate having more exploration now in your present state so that you don't create an explosion just to get the thing that you think you want that's somehow going to be better? How can you create more exploration now and still have your business run effectively? Um, one is, you know, being able to work away from, okay, there's a few things. One, being able to work away from home, which you know, I'm experimenting with in a couple of weeks, three weeks mm -hmm. a month. Um, another is, you know, if I make great money, it's easier for crew, my wife to, to come and, and, and be where I am. Yeah. You know? So, you know, we can, and you know, something I see on in the past is that when I'm on the road, I'm, I'm like, you know, pushing myself and not taking care of myself and every last couple of trips there's been opportunities where you know, someone's gifted me to stay in a hotel or you know, in a, next week the festival's putting me up in a hotel. And All I was right. like, oh, it's so nice to have that and not be worried about where I'm going to sleep. Um, okay, so stop, hang on yep. for a second, please, because mm -hmm. all of you are running your scarcity stories, but can you see that you're not honouring the form that it is in that you think you're missing? So like Ash, you think that you don't have or you're not keeping money, you don't have enough money, but that's because you're expecting to see it in the, the, the $50 bill. Mm -hmm. Nothing is missing, guys. It's just in a form that you haven't acknowledged. Now you get to transform the form, but until you see where it is now, you can't transform it. If you mm -hmm. think it's missing, you don't have the power. So can you see that, Ash, like that you've mm -hmm. actually had abundance of money in different forms, uh, gifts, 
hotel, accommodation. Mm. It's come to you in different ways. Yes, and you know, the perfect example, I wanted to get some cards for my clients because I send them cards every now and then. And then what did the universe uh, and, do? And then on the weekend, <laughs> this lady gave me all these beautiful cards that, you know, just stunning photos that she's taken. And she's like, oh, I used to sell these, but I don't anymore and I wanted to give them to you. And so, yeah, I can, you know, I can see that's happening. And the same with the festival giving me a suite and which meant that, you know, my family can come and stay for free. Okay, which is, and, and so, you just said one of the things that you wanted to create was the ability for Prude or your wife to come. So, you guys, <laughs> manifesting. We've been talking about manifesting in Business Builder. You are manifesting. But what did I say with the manifestation formula? If you leave a detail out, the universe is going to fill that fucker in. And you might not like the form that it's given it to you in. So, Ash, you've, like, you've been thinking, I want this thing. I want my family to be able to come and stay with me. It's created it, but you were expecting to create it through $2,000 in the bank account rather mm -hmm. than, right? So the universe gives you what you want. It's just that you weren't specific. So if you would love to transform those things into tangible cash, then you need to be specific about what that looks like. And I mean really specific. So one of you in our one-on-ones, we drill into your financial goals and where that money's coming from ahead of time. And it happens. Meaning if you set a goal for 10K per month, you then want to list where is that money coming from. X amount of new clients paying in full. Existing clients re-signing. Like, get specific because any detail you leave out, the universe is going to colour it in for you. So, Ash, do you want to transform it into money or are you happy to keep it in the multiple forms that it's coming in? Both. <laughs> Both. Yeah, because, you know, okay. when, it comes, when it comes in those unexpected gift ways, it's like, oh. How, how beautiful that someone would give that to me. Well, they gifted it to you because you didn't take responsibility to make it in the form of money. So you knew you wanted it, but then you outsourced the delivery of it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So, guys, because I'm mindful of time here, right? This whole session has been around the scarcity, the perception of lack, whether it's lack of time, lack of energy, lack of connection to self and others, lack of money, lack of keeping it. Lack, lack, lack. You are spending your whole day walking around thinking that you don't have the thing that you want and you do. Can you see that, Ash? Can you see that you actually have what you want? Not yet. Okay, well, we've got some work to do in your one-on-one -on -one then. Mm -hmm. Can anybody else see that Ash has got what he, what, can you see it, guys? You can see it, right. And, you know, always... and I'm also aware that over the next, you know, that this, this is like, you know, that there's deep work that's just happened and that it will change how I perceive the world and that, you know, insight will, will come in the next few days. And, I mean, Ash was in the hot seat a couple of months ago. <laughs> I think later that day you were hating on me for a little while because it brought up a whole bunch of stuff. But then you loved me again the next day once you processed it, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's a bit raw right now, but I know it'll, <laughs> it'll work its magic. All right, so here's what I want all of you to take away from today if you take nothing else. Whenever you notice yourself thinking that there is something missing, that you don't have something, I want you to ask yourself and answer the question, where is it? And don't just stand in the shower and go, oh, I don't have $1,500. Where is it? Oh, I can't find it. No, you ask yourself the question consistently until the answer presents itself. And you're looking for where it is in either the same or similar form. So you might not see where the $1,500 is, right? 
But you know, like Ash, the accommodation, what's it worth? I don't know, 600 bucks, 700, I don't know. Um, right? 800 bucks. And then what's the, and what then, and then ask yourself, what is it worth for your wife to then be able to come and stay for three days? Like, what's the monetary value on that to mm -hmm. you? List what something is worth to you. I think one of the, the misconceptions or, or like a blind spot for many of us is you pay money to get coaching, for example, and you don't even stop to see the true value of what it is that you've spent most of the time. You go, oh, I spent $2,000 on a coach and I got, I got one client. No, you fucking didn't. You got a fucking system to use that brings like the 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 learning and the consulting and the coaching that I did five years ago with some someone is still paying me today. If you don't start to see beyond your immediacy, you're gonna live in scarcity for the rest of your life, team. Does that make sense? So please start to look for where is the thing that you think you don't have because I promise you it is in your life. It's your job to find it. Ash, thank you so much for, I mean, just an incredible open, I mean, I, I just have no words. You, you just are a continued inspiration in my life and I'm so, so grateful for you. So, guys, I would love to hear from you in the chat. Um, what have you? What, what's been your insight today? Please jump in the chat and share. Yeah, look, Sue. <laughs> Sue thanks you, Ash. Sylvia thanks you. Kay thanks you. Heather thanks you. I think there's going to be lots of thank yous in there, Ash. Uh, Ash is channeling you. You're off looking. Erwin, be the client you would love to attract. Thank you, Ash. Kay, nothing is lacking. Asking myself, where is the thing I think I'm missing? Aralea, you don't see the gift you're given. Beautiful session, Ash and Shani. Sylvia's had at least big, at least 10 big aha uh, moments. So relatable. This is why you guys get to pick the hot seat person, yeah? I'm seeing a lot of tears in people's eyes, by the way. Um, Katrin, thank you so much. This helped me to find four subconscious programs for yourself to clear. Incredible. Ella, whatever you fear trying to run from is already here. Thank you, Ash and Shani. Who else wants to share? I'll give you a couple of minutes. So while the rest of you are sharing in the chat, so um, Maria, learn to love your homelessness. <laughs> right? <laughs> Look, it, one of the great things, because I've done the work on homelessness as well, if I was homeless tomorrow, it'd just be like, fucking reading books, writing and hanging out with myself all day. I mean, who doesn't want that? Right? So then you want to ask yourself, how do I create that now in my current life? Because otherwise you start to resent your current life because you perceive that you're missing out on the thing that you really want to do, read books, connect, whatever it is. Right? That's the subconscious driver. Thank you so, so much for sharing. Um, this is obviously part of our Business Builder membership. If you're not currently working one-on-one -on -one with me and you would love to have a conversation about that, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, Ash, again, thank you so, so much. And until next month in our Mindset Class team, have an incredible rest of your day and I'll see you all at the next perfect time. Yes? Ciao, ciao.